Joan Does the Charleston by Dorothy Manners. Picture play, August 1926. To catch the attention of the noisy cash customers, the drummer of the orchestra, Montmartre's preferably, seizes his cymbals and ends the final chord with an abrupt, ear-rumbling crash. Master of Ceremonies, loud and funny. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this evening's dancing contest is Miss Joan Crawford of the Metro Goldwyn Studios, dancing with Mr. In misplaced enthusiasm, a collegiate lets out a war whoop, and unfortunately, Mr. Blank's name is lost. It always is. Master of Ceremonies. Folks, maybe if we are nice, Miss Crawford will give us an exhibition. Maybe. What do you say? The entire horse-throated room. Yeah! At a crowd, introducing Miss Crawford, who is going to do a little Charleston, a little aggravating Charleston for us. Let's go! The crowd jammed around the floor divides now, and there comes Joan. There she goes, all dressed up in her party clothes. Sometimes she wears white, with heavy gardenias on her shoulder. Sometimes green, pale pink, gray. Tonight it is black, studded with brilliance, her long bobbed hair wavy and uncovered. With greedy eyes, the crowd perch themselves, like figures on a crazy frieze, around the smoke-befogged room, hungry lest they miss a step of it, of that tortuous in-and-out dance of the Negroes, the Charleston Charleston. Let's go! Somebody yells, there she goes! And no foolin', there she goes! Now her sleeves jiggle in the spotlight until the brilliance seem like wrinkling eyes suddenly gone crazy. Now her feet shuffle. Now her hands slide from knee to knee. The dance goes on. Somebody yells, Look at that lady! And if you look, you'd be crazy not to. You'll see a mock bit of rheumatism underway. Joan's white hands on a crippled hip. Now she shakes her hair into a tangle. Now her knees knock insanely. Oh my, look at that lady! An odd girl, Joan, and an awfully pretty one. Not unlike that little chorus girl dreamer that she played in Sally, Irene, and Mary. If you saw Irene, you know a little bit about Joan, the real Joan. She came from that atmosphere, stage doors, broken mirrors, broken everything, where whistling in a dressing room is on par with murder as an offense. One of the Metro Goldwyn officials spotted her in a spotlight and drew up a Klieg light contract with her. She packed her belongings, her mother and kid brother, and came out to the coast. Her name then was Lucille Lesseur. Too hard to pronounce. The Goldwyn people got up a contest that also got a lot of publicity and changed her name to Joan Crawford. Easier to pronounce. And before she made Sally, Irene, and Mary, she worked in a couple of pictures playing bits, or what did they have? Every night I see her in some cafe or another. She brought that New York suppertime restlessness to Hollywood. Always, she is the prettiest girl in the room. Between dances, she sits at a ringside table and sips straw-colored ginger ale out of a tall, chilled glass, and smiles politely at her escort. These gentlemen usually change with the evening, though lately she has been seen more than twice in the company of Michael Cudahy. So, of course, their engagement has been rumored. She used to dance a lot with a boy named Jerry Chrysler. You never saw such dancing as they did. Even in the jitteriest jazz, it was beautiful. They had a languid way of flowing from pose to pose. Jerry and Joan have ovations in Montmartre that would warm the hearts of the brightest Broadway favorites. The reason I mention it is because Jerry is awfully sick now, and trying hard to get well out in the sunshine. People make inquiries about the dreamy-eyed girl with the jazz feet. Sometimes older couples speak to her, complimenting her on her dancing. She smiles at them graciously, thanking them for their compliments, her manner modest and unsmarty. They go back to their tables calling her a sweet girl. It is when she gets up to dance that she becomes different from the hundreds of other girls in the room. Like a priestess officiating at a rite. Saxophones, violins, the wailing voice of a coon singer caroling jazz philosophies. So much for that. On the screen, she has a nice quality of sweetness and depth. 
A reviewer on a local paper found her presence not unlike Pauline Frederick's. Not her technique, her presence. Out at Metro Goldwyn's, they are planning rather ambitious things for her. She is going to be featured in Paris, being made by Edmund Golding, the director of Sally, Irene, and Mary. You know what that ought to be. Clothes, 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 and fat men sending roses to thin girls. At least one champagne dinner. One true love, and a heavy with a mustache. A popular background. Joan, with her quality of sympathy, should fit nicely into it. Well, she'll make the picture, and at night, she'll drop into Montmartre and Charleston for the crowd. Maybe she'll wear blue, with a trailing soft feather on her hat. Maybe yellow. And people will ask who she is, and say she is pretty, and wonder if she is engaged to Michael Cudahy.